Here we go. Hello, and thank you for joining us for this blog. Today, we will talk about the impact of market-wide stress events on liquidity risk. And I'm very glad to have today Professor Murad Chowdhury, who is joining us. Um, you probably know Prof from uh, his association with uh, Faculty BTRM, which he uh, founded, uh, but also for the numerous books he's um, uh, published and written on uh, uh, credit derivatives, on asset liability management, on treasury and capital market. Um, I'm sure it's uh, uh, very well known that you are finally happy to listen to uh, as part of this uh, uh, broadcast. So thank you, uh, Professor. Um, You're very welcome. Thank you for inviting uh, me. I'll start with uh, a few questions um, on uh, liquidity risk. As you know, we're currently experiencing uh, a very peculiar time with um, a lot of stress events. So uh, what are the, the most prominent risks that uh, banks are facing today and, and how are they approaching them and, and mitigating them? You're quite right. Liquidity risk is always something that is significant and important during any market-wide stress event such as we're experiencing now. And in in a case like this, banks need to address it as a matter of urgency. I tend to think that for most types of stress events, but certainly including the one we're experiencing this year, cash is king is the ultimate watchword for all banks, irrespective of their business model. So it's important to maximize or optimize uh, one's liquidity position, instant accessibility to cash, because of course there is a lot of uncertainty about how the stress event will play out. With respect to managing cash and optimizing the cash position, of course, there are regulatory minimums that a bank has to address, uh, principally liquidity coverage ratio, the LCR metric, and that should be managed as uh, finely or keenly as possible, down to as granular level by business line and customer type as possible. But of course, the, we should also be aware that the regulatory authorities have recognized this and have allowed some flexibility for dipping below minimums while the stress is taking place. We should also address, uh, a, a, as part of a wider asset liability management question, what the current rate of interest rates around the world means, the level of interest rates means for our ALM and liquidity management practice. So we should always remember that liquidity and cash is king is important. So we should still address what our customer deposit balances are uh, while rates are low, while the rates we can offer them are unattractive. That's probably how I'd like to summarize that. So it's an implication in terms of pricing, in terms of campaign and attracting new customers for deposits, but it's also converting existing liquidity into HQLAs. Absolutely, yes. That's very well summarized and thank you. So what are the strategic implications that arise for banks following the expected new normal? I mean, obviously COVID is um, is a special term uh, time, but um, uh, we could face other, and we have faced in Asia, in, um, in the great financial crisis, a uh, stress event. So, so how do we cope with that new normal? The new normal is the expression uh, previously introduced by, I believe it was Mohammed al uh, from the, he was at PIMCO Investment Managers at the time of the last crash. Today, it's referring to the way we work. Uh, for example, we've seen lockdown policy, we've seen restrictions on travel, face-to-face -face meetings. Uh, that impacts all companies, certainly impacts banks. And in terms of maintaining customer origination, I think addressing new normal and from a risk management perspective means addressing the efficiency of a bank's operational processes, its adaptability, its speed of response. For me, the most important learning lesson out of this stress event so far is that the way banks were previously organized with functional teams or siloed teams addressing each part of the process, it doesn't, it doesn't lend itself to an optimized or most efficient uh, process, uh, origination process and speed of response. Moving to a cross-disciplinary team environment, I think, will help banks address this new normal environment and still maintain efficiency in originating customer products. So instead of having the split across different functions, customer facing, operations, legal, HR, etc., we have a team that is multidisciplinary under one head, which then can work more efficiently in the new normal operating environment, new normal working environment, and therefore speed up the process of origination. Because adaptability and speed of response are critical uh, during a long term uh, stress events such as we're experiencing now. At a more detailed risk management level, of course, there's con 
but plenty of unknowns still with us how this stress event plays out. So um, the way the, the, the approach to provisioning for loan defaults, what this means for our customers in the long run and the credit impairments, uh, that needs to be addressed as well, particularly the way we can crunch the numbers, analyze the data with respect to individual customers. So down to specific sectors, specific customers, and then determine what that means for our provisioning uh, from, uh, from a loan customer default point of view. That's also important and an ability to do this quickly and well at a granular level, I think is another learning lesson way taking away to, to be taken away from this stress event. Thank you for this uh, very salient point. I, <clears throat> I like your point number one on the uh, cross-functional team because I've seen successful banks actually um, also ensuring that um, uh, even member of a cross-functional teams are actually uh, cross-pollinated through rotation, uh, job rotation across the function so that they can help uh, the team more effectively as they go from one function to another. So this brings us to the last question, which is uh, regarding the yield curve. And uh, if I am to consult the number of uh, volumes you have uh, written that concern the yield curve, that seems to be your favorite topic. So um, the yield curve is currently in playing negative interest rate in uh, uh, pounds and is virtually flat in uh, USD. Uh, what should bank asset liability management desk uh, should be doing in order to address this with respect to balance sheet management? Very good question. And you're very perceptive, sir. The, the yield curve was indeed my first love in finance and possibly my deepest and longest lasting one. Um, absolutely. We had the experience of negative rates, of course, in the Eurozone for the last six years now. Uh, but we are seeing this, this, uh, this impact, this approach now uh, manifesting itself in other currencies. Uh, Japan also has been a negative for a while, but also now in sterling, the yield curve in the government uh, for government bonds has gone to negative out to the five-year point. The US dollar curve hasn't gone negative, but it's very flat. This has uh, implications, significant implications for treasury desks and ALM functions in banks. Uh, I, I think banks should be preparing for this in the event that it stays negative for longer, and in fact goes formally ne negative, if indeed it does, uh, in, in, in sterling and dollars. So in the first instance, communications with all the bank stakeholders, internal and external, as to what exactly they're going to do in this environment, to what extent they're going to be passing on the rate or not passing on the rate to, uh, to customers on both sides of the balance sheet. Uh, internally addressing themselves, for example, at their asset liability committee, uh, what this means, what this would mean for their customer product pricing policy. I think it's very important that the ALCO, the asset liability committee, has a policy on what uh, negative rates would mean for the bank's pricing and also determining what this will mean and how the bank should address surplus cash management. Uh, of course, if the rate officially goes negative, then surplus cash deposited with the, the, the central bank will be a cost, a significant drag on the balance sheet for the bank in question. So optimizing the cash position becomes very important such that the level of liabilities, cash liabilities at the central bank is minimized. This, of course, uh, goes uh, is, is contrary, if you like, uh, to the first point I made about cash is king and maximizing one's cash position. Uh, so if one is in a negative interest rate environment, it becomes a very difficult or significant balancing act with respect to how much surplus cash one wants to hold to meet stress event outflows and how much surplus, surplus cash one wants to be having at the central bank if it's turning into a very big drag on the balance sheet. So I think these three points uh, would be would be uh, top of the priority list for a bank in a negative rates environment. Well, thank you so much for your insight.